Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video that shows you how to obtain the step response of a transfer function. So, so let us learn how to find out the step response of a given transfer function by using one method. So in this example, we'll be taking a transfer function with a uh, let's take a second order numerator. Okay, let's do it. So, first step, you write down the given transfer function. In our case, it is t of s is equal to s into s plus 3 by s plus 1 into s plus 11 into s plus 7. So, the first step you're gonna make, you have to do to uh, find out the step response or any time response is to write it in the form of c of s by r of s is equal to t of s. So what do you have here now? We have c of s by r of s is equal to s into s plus 3 by s plus 1 into s plus 11 into s plus 7. So any time response is actually C of T. C of T is your time response. So now think of ways to obtain C of T from the equation above, which is C of S by R of S is equal to some transfer function. <coughs> so the first step you'll do is send R of S to the RHS side. So you will be left with C of S. So once you send R of S to the right hand side, you will have C of S is equal to R of S into S into S plus 3 by S plus 1 into S plus 11 into S plus 7. Your next million dollar is quest question is R of S is equal to how much? You know that for every time response, you have, I mean, for every unit time response, you have a step response. Let me just explain. The table, the uh, information below here in the square shows you the different values of R of S for different types of responses. So once you have R of S value, you just need to substitute the value in the C of S in the above equation. So in our case, we are finding out the step response. So you need to substitute R of S is equal to 1 by S, right? So I'm going to remove this R of S and I'm going to write it as 1 by S. Now, using a simple cancellation, I'm going to cut S and S. So, this equation is going to be S plus 3 by S plus 1 into S plus 11 into S plus 7. This is C of S. But what is a time response? A time response is C of T. So, when will you get C of T from C of S? The only thing you need to do is applying a Laplace inverse. So applying Laplace inverse to C of S, that is will give you C of T. So applying Laplace inverse of C of S will give you C of T. Now you cannot, if you look at the right hand side, you have an insep, you have a fraction you have s plus 3 by s plus 1 into s plus 11 into s plus 7 you have a fraction so first of all if you have to apply laplace inverse on the right hand side you have to resolve those that big fraction into small partial fractions so on resolving them into partial fractions i got this if you have any doubts regarding partial fractions, it not, it's not very difficult also. You can learn it. And even if you don't have that much time, you can go for many websites which offer online partial uh, fractions. Um, Wolfram is one of them and I used it. So once you resolve your given huge fraction into these small partial fractions, you are now free to apply the Laplace inverse. So simple formula to remember 
to apply a Laplace inverse or uh, is uh, the only formula which you'll be applying in this control systems in this time response is Laplace inverse of 1 by s plus 1 is equal to e power minus t let me write down write me let me write uh, um, write that down for you so before that so I have written the formula above over here so this is the formula you need to remember if you have to uh, find out the Laplace inverse of any term so Laplace inverse of 1 by s plus 1 is equal to e power minus t so if you have if you have 7 here there's going to be 7 here so now you can easily resolve this into partial fractions so I mean uh, you can easily I'm sorry you can easily find out the Laplace inverse of the following terms so so for the following transfer function for the tra for the uh, transfer function which has been resolved into partial fractions here is now this when you apply the Laplace inverse so Laplace inverse of c of s is c of t Laplace inverse of 1 by 6 into uh, s plus 7 is 1 by 6 into e power minus 70 and so on for these two terms also. So now you have an equation c of t is equal to 1 by 6 e power minus 70 minus 1 by 5 into e power minus 70 plus 1 by 30 into e power minus t. So now to find out the step this is the main equation which you're gonna use but now this this does not this doesn't mean that your sum is over because there is a lot more to do you now have to plot the step response on a graph sheet even before that you need to substitute you need to substitute for different values of t when t is equal to 0 what is the response so when t is equal to 0 substitute 0 in the entire above equation and you're gonna get 0 when t is equal to 1 you're gonna get 0, 0.0 you're gonna get I'm sorry you're gonna get 0 0.0124 when t is 2 you're gonna get 0 0.04511 so in this way you can plot any number of values you can you need to substitute t value and then find out c of t so now take a plain graph paper mark out the axis and then write down the scale scale take it as comforting just take the value which is suitable for your thing and then mark out everything and in the in our case a step response is something like this so in this way I just didn't write down so you have I just forgot to tell this is your C of T and this is your T T on the X axis and C of T on the Y axis and C of T is your amplitude so in this way you can find out the step response of a given transfer function theoretically for to find out how to uh, to find out the step response using MATLAB or Scilab just browse my channel you'll find it I hope you found this video interesting and informative and uh, good luck if you have an exam tomorrow and thank you for watching my video and have a lovely day ahead